hey, it's the preacher here. Today we're going to conduct a little experiment cleaning some brass. I was really looking into buying uh, some stainless steel uh, tumbler media and, and getting a, a steel tumbler. And I talked to uh, Bob, the guy in our church that kind of got me into reloading last year. And he said, oh, he said, it's a lot more work. And anyways, I said, well, the reviews are good. The brass is supposed to come out so clean inside and out. And he said, well, I've got a kind of a makeshift tumbler and I've got the steel media. So why don't you give it a try? So that's what we're going to do today. I have a Chicago brand um, tumbler. You can get these at Harbor Freight. Uh, it's a rock polisher, I guess what you'd probably call it. Bob has loaned me some stainless steel uh, filter, uh, tumble media. And then I have the three primary loads that I, or uh, calibers that I reload. I have some 30-06 in varying degrees of cleanliness. This one here is just about brown. 243, I load a lot of these, not just for myself, but for other people. So we'll be tumbling some 243 and 223 in varying degrees of dirtiness and this little brown jewel was one of 50 that got lost we found 49 of the 50 norma brass that we shot that day we gave up came home six months later walking to the target on my own personal range i found it laying there in the trail so that's really old we'll see what it does to it that's the only norma brass that i'm putting in there so the reason i'm doing this is because these little steel pins tend to get stuck in primer pockets and case necks. And so what I want to see is how it hangs up in 30-06, 243, and 223. So we're going to use this small tumbler. I know that the ones you buy are much bigger and probably do a much better job. But the cleaning up process is going to be the same. You still have to rinse your brass after it's done tumbling. You still have to dry your media out, dry your brass before you can do anything with it. So I looked online and I found the Lemon Shine and I got some Blue Dawn. These are the two things they say to add to the water. So with that being said, let's load this up and let's see what it does on this really dirty brass. Maybe we can decide whether we want to buy one, uh, jump and spend the money for an expensive one or if we want to just stick with our corn cob grit and walnut. So we'll see what it does. I don't know what the measurements are, but I'm going to say that's probably enough. Just a pinch, not between your cheek and gum either. Let's add enough water to get it all pretty well covered. A little bit more. took more water than I thought. How about another drop of soap? Whoop. That's about it. Okay. Okay, it's 4.15. The brass has been tumbling for two hours. Now I'm not trying to decide whether the uh, Chicago Electric Power Tools three pound rotary rock tumbler is good or not. I'm trying to decide if I want to mess with steel pins as a tumbling media. So let's open it up. Set it there where you can see. 
There we go. Okay, got the metal lid off the way this lid fits in there is just difficult to operate. That looks pretty good. Okay, time for a dump test. Let's turn this around here where you can see it. I think you can see that. This is a tray out of an ice chest. You know, to set your sandwiches on so it don't get down in the ice. And I just couldn't bring myself to throw it away, knowing someday I would for sure need it for something. And this is one of the rare instances where I was right. That's been in there two hours. Now what I'm concerned about are the pins being stuck inside the brass or inside the primer pocket, the flash hole. So let's set this off. The brass looks great. Wash these off and see what happens. Primer pockets look good. Now there's a wad in there. This is what Bob was talking about. He said you get compacted loads of the white, the uh, metal pins in there and they don't want to come out. I know that probably ain't the best clamp, but I think if I clamp that to the bowl, it's falling down in there. <laughs> the first couple brass I've got out are already dry. <laughs> Here we go. That water is disgusting. But it took me roughly 20 minutes to get the cases empty. So let's go dump this down the drain. Then we'll spread the pins out to dry. And we'll spread the shells out and uh, we'll put all the cases in the oven and dry them. Old pan, don't use it. All right, we'll stick them in the oven for about 15, 20 minutes. I've got it set on 170. That's as low as my oven will go. Ah, oh, fresh brass. Okay, there it is. Let's have a look at it. Picking up the darker brass. There's our normal round that was so brown when we started. 
Okay, final thoughts from our experiment today. Do the steel media clean brass better than it, than anything else? Yes, a definitive yes. This stuff was old, old. The reason I tried these three calibers is to see how bad the steel media would stick inside the case neck. And that was a severe problem. And if I were doing pistol cartridges, man, I would, I would own one of these tomorrow. However, I don't reload pistol cartridges. I reload 223, 243, and 30-06. So, so with that being said, that's a game changer. If I owned a stainless tumbler, I would probably, you know, have a better process of getting the pins out of the brass. So from my perspective, since my good friend Bob owns this uh, tumbler from Harbor Freight, I think the next time I, someone gives me range brass or gives me some of their granddad's old brass, I think I'll just get the tumbler from Bob, run it, dry everything out, take it back to him, or purchase my own $40 tumbler rather than dropping $200, $400 on a stainless tumbler. So it has its application, but I don't think it's for every day. Hope that helps you make a decision. Thanks for watching.